Make sure you guys don't forget to like and comment under this video. So let's dive into it for another top five best point guards of the 2000s ever. From basically 2000 through 2009. So at number five, I got no other than Chauncey Billups, Mr. Big Shot. Man, he was pretty much was a point guard that you need on your team in terms of floor general. And then he could shoot the ball from mid-range, three ball. And you know he was a pretty good defender, so he was he was a basically an all-around point guard. Uh, you know he had some incredible numbers with the Pistons, won the championship in 2004 with, with uh, Big Ben, Ben Wallace, Rasheed Wallace, uh, Richard Hamilton, and Tayshawn Prince. That was a well offensive and defensive stacked team. Not too many big household names. But you had some all-star type players on that team. But Chauncey Bills was the perfect point guard you need. He can fit in any era, best off his play style. You know, a guy that can throw the general, can drop, can drop like nine assists, and then put up a good 23, 24 points. And you know, that 2004 finals against the Lakers was incredible because of the fact that he shot the lights out that whole series against Kobe and Shaq and the Lakers. And and don't forget that Lakers team had Carmen Long and Gary Payne. <clears throat> so to beat that super team like that was phenomenal in the finals. And like I said, he was very efficient. And he was averaging, I think, like, I want to say like 20, I think it was like 26 a game. And, you know, like I say, you, you, I mean, you see the stats. He, he shot very efficient that whole series from all over the place, from free throws, three-pointers, and just field goal percentage in general. And Chauncey Biggles, man, pretty much was a very underrated point guard. Like I said, he wasn't too flashy. He was straight to the point. You know, he knew what to do for the offense, set up his teammates, and know, and then he knew when to get buckets. And, you know, like I said, he was a good defender as well. So, no doubt about it, he's number five on my list. No doubt about it. And at number four, Tony Parker, the Frenchman, one of the best, if not the best, dribble paternity trader to the rim of his era. Had a nice, deadly, lethal mid-range game. You know, he was, a, he was a key, a huge key, key piece of the Spurs franchise along with, of course, Ginobili and Tim Duncan. That big three of a trio. And, you know, in the 2000 finals, 2007 finals, excuse me, <laughs> 2007 finals, he was, un he was unguardable. He was unstoppable. I think he averaged like 25, 26 uh, uh, points per game in the, in the finals against a young LeBron Cavaliers team. But Tony Parker was that dude. Like I say, he was quick, the speed, you know, a good mid-range shooter. Dribble penetration was unguardable because of the fact that you couldn't let him get his finishes. And he had a deadly floater game. I think he was one of the first guards I've seen to really use a floater as a go-to shot inside the paint. So, you know, Tony Parker was Tony Parker was him. You know what I'm saying? He was quick, mid-range game, Florida game, and then, you know, of course, the pick and roll with him and Tim Duncan. And, you know, I said Tony Parker could has the, and he had the ability to take over games when he wanted to when it was time when if, uh, Greg Popovich gave him that green light. So, Tony Parker definitely deserved to be number four on my list. And at number three, no other than CP3. Chris Paul, his run with the Hornets in 2000 was incredible, uh, especially during the 2007-8 season, man. He was just out of his mind. You've seen this clip, just getting pure buckets, um, you know, mid-range, finishing the three-point ball. You know, he was pretty much, you know, he was a pesky, quick defender. And I think in the 2000s, he was a two-time steals uh, champ. And, you know, like I said, the pick and roll, maestro, but more in this clip, he was more all around this game in terms of just scoring the basketball, the quickness, the speed, 
you know, he he was just he was just a good two way point guard at, of his time with the Hornets, and he always been a good two way guard throughout his whole career. But you know, a young prime Chris Paul with the Hornets was unstoppable, and then of course, what he did in the 08 playoffs was was remarkable, and um, you know, like I said, man, Chris Paul was was, was a walking triple double, not triple double, a walking double double. Then people forget it right around the mid 2000s. Everybody kept asking who was the better point guard, him or Darren Williams. So shout out to Darren Williams because he got one of the best heads he crossovers I've ever seen in my life. So shout out to my boy Darren Williams. But, you know, uh, back to Chris Paul, man. Like I said, man, what he did with the Hornets was incredible, especially that team of uh, Pedro Salakovich, who I mentioned on my channel, um, David West, Tyson Chandler. Of course, he was an easy live threat for Chris Paul way before the Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan era when TP3 was to the Clippers. But man, Chris Paul was Chris Paul was out of his mind in the 2000s, uh, especially when he got to the league. All, already became known to be a good on-ball defender, uh, again, averaging more than, uh, right around two steals a game, and then, you know, facilitating and then ever score the ball. So he deserved, number, he deserved to be number three on my list. And then number two, I got no other than the back-to-back -back MVP. The sniper Canadian, Steve Nash. I don't know about him. If not the most efficient scorer on this list, point guard list, you know, he could shoot the lights out, finishing at the rim, mid-range game was on lock, three-point game was on lock. I mean, dude was just efficient all around. Had four seasons, consecutive seasons in the NBA where he shot 50% from the field, 40% from the three-point line, and 90% or higher from the free throw line. So, dude was an efficient, pure offensive point guard. Could set up teammates, flashy passes, but dude was really just, really, really, really was, was an efficient scorer and shooter. And, you know, of course, the pick and roll uh, OD of him and Mars Steinemeyer, the slasher of Sean Marion, you know, that trio was nice to watch on a daily basis. And it worked out well for them. Obviously, they couldn't reach to the finals, but, you know, they always made a few conference and finals appearances and stuff like that. But Steve Nash, man, you got to give credit to him just because of the fact that he could drop downs and he can cross you over and he could get buckets at the same time. So, shout out to my boy Steve Nash, man. And we got the same birthday, so maybe that's why I have good passes. <laughs> but, uh, no, man, Steve Nash was basically a, a, a pure bucket getter. In terms of just knowing when to score, then he was efficient, didn't take bad shots, you know. Um, like I say, he, you know, he's his IQ was him, him and Chris Paul. Of course, IQ was top notch. Can't, 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 can't forget about that. But you know, um, Steve Nash, man, back to back MVPs. You know, you know, controversial ones, but I mean, it's the reason why because you averaging more than ten assists back-to-back -back years and averaging close to 20 points per game and winning impact. So, c Nash deserves to be number two on my list. And number one, no other than my favorite point guard on this list, Jason Kidd, well-rounded point guard, more defensive-minded, the best defender on this list in terms of point guards, uh, big body, new uh, winning scorer, but he was more of a pass-first, defensive-minded point guard. Um, also had very, very intelligent IQ, uh, a decent shooter, can knock down shots, good finish at the rim. You know, he was real poised to the game. And, you know, it was nothing too majorly flashy about him. But, you know, Jason Kidd, man, I just I just love his IQ and how well he played defensively. And he was a great rebounder at that point guard position. So, basically, he was, in terms of rebounding, and the assists, he was the Russell Westbrook for the Russell Westbrook because they used to call him the original Mr. Triple Double. So, Jason Kidd, man, leading the Nets back to back finals appearances. Um, you know, with him, Kenyon Martin, Richard Jefferson, Kerry Kittles, the whole bunch. And, you know, J Jason Kidd came to the Nets and elevated their franchise of two back to back great seasons and back to back finals appearances. So, that's my top five best point guards of the 2000s era. Let me, let me know what you guys think. If you like this video, like, comment, share, subscribe. I love you guys. Jay Boogie is out.